So yeah, it's always a challenge to try and classify the unclassifiable. Um, I think the fact that we have a group of patients with unclassifiable disease speaks to some of the challenges we have clinically, which is to say that although we've got diagnostic guidelines, about 10 to 15 percent of patients don't comfortably fit under any one of those diagnostic categories. And so we're left with patients where we're perhaps not sure if they've got IPF or chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis or maybe an autoimmune driven disease. So I think again the, the challenge of unclassifiable ILD is we don't really know how to treat it. At the moment we tend to treat the patients based on whether we think the fibrosis is the main problem or whether we think they've got an autoimmune driven condition. So sometimes they get given antifibrotic drugs, sometimes they get given immunosuppressants and we don't really know what the best treatment approach is. So the study set out to answer the question as to whether antifibrotics would work in this group of patients. We specifically chose perfenadone. We went to expert centres that had multidisciplinary team meetings who were the ones that made the assessment that the interstitial lung disease was unclassifiable. Uh, we had some relatively straightforward inclusion criteria around extent of disease and severity of lung function, but otherwise we tried to capture all of those patients who were unclassifiable. Subjects were randomised to either placebo or perfenadone and treated for 24 weeks and we used force vital capacity as the primary endpoint measure. So I think at the moment we've not been able to dig into the data to see whether there's any subgroup of individuals who might benefit more than others. Overall, we saw that disease progression in this group of patients was similar to what we see in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and the magnitude of benefit with perfenadone was again very similar to what we see in IPF. So my suspicion is that any patient who's got progressive fibrosis in the context of unclassifiable disease will benefit from treatment. As I've already alluded to, we've never known whether to use immunosuppressants or antifibrotics. Now we've got good evidence that antifibrotics are effective in this patient group. What we still don't know is about the immunosuppressant drugs. So I think what we next need to do as an academic community is to design the studies to assess whether antifibrotics on their own are the best treatment or whether we should be using them in combination with things like corticosteroids or mycophenolate mofetil.